Hey guys. Hello. So we are recycling paper and um, you can hear the blender. So what we've done is we have three sheets of paper. I'll be honest, I was really disappointed I didn't get the other night. We got three sheets of paper and we ripped them up into like pieces about this big and then we put them in water and now they're soaking. You cannot really see that well. Can you see? Go down, down, down. Can you see it? Anyway, so then there's a blender right here um, and Mr. Mac is going to uh, blend it into a pulp. Yummy. So... Okay, so bye guys. Poured um, our mixture of paper into the blender, and he's gonna blend it into a pulp. That's my syllabus for math. I'm gonna blend you to a pulp. That's my pure pulp That's my uh, math test that I got in seventy. There's some of our pulp from earlier. <laughs> That's what it's gonna look like. It looks so like strawberry like puree. Math syllabus. <laughs> And it tastes like one. No, it doesn't. So I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> He's gonna take it out of our it. blender. It's a big gooey mush. Yummy. Yeah. Pulp of paper. Look what you did. On the floor. It's like back case of diarrhea. All right. <laughs> so, are you done with those? I need you to hurry up and take that off there. Put it on the so paper. zoomed in. Wait, where's Lindsay? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. He got some folded, put it on the one he's folded. Okay. Up close and personal. No. Now the 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 edges are gonna look a little jagged like this. But what we're gonna do when you're finished is we're gonna cut all around them and make make a nice neat little sheet of paper. All right, here you go. Who's who's running this? Um Rachel. Flower girl, oh. let's go. Oh gosh. All right, so we're gonna take this screen. These old screens I had right here, the they're really a little too big. And uh, people have kind of pushed them to death. So we're just going to take one of these screens. I just took it like a screen off your porch. And we're going to pour some of the pulp over it. Now you can use as much or as little as you want to. That's a pretty oh thick pulp. So you can just rake off whatever you don't want to use. Well, I think we want all of it. You want all of it? <laughs> you can always grab some more and put it back on there. I can't touch that. that. The more pulp you have, the thicker it's going to be. So it's up to you. We don't want it to be too bad. And you're going to take this. You're going to take these two screens. Now, and basically, that was like a, a brain or something right there. <laughs> it's a Krabby Patty. And then you're going to take and squeeze. So, Luke, you may have to help her here. Yeah, Whoever's got the bigger hand. You guys, they may put, put their hand under there. Not me. All right, take your hand, put it on there, and start okay. squeezing. Can you squeeze that much? Leave it to dry now. Yeah, you just squeeze. Yeah, just squeeze as much water as you can. I don't like how that feels. Yeah, make sure you write your name on it. Oh, yummy. Oh, that is not enough. Yeah, you want to squeeze for Here, you hold the camera. I'll do it. Here, no, I said I was just, I was just getting some of it off. Here's Layla, our camera woman. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Rachel's the camera woman now. No, I'm, no, I'm the camera woman. I guess I'm not going to do anything. I guess he's going to so do it So close to your face. See, because, like, what you do is you mix the pulp with the water. And then you take the strainer and go so up. squeezing. Squeezing, making our paper mold. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Rachel, one of y'all may want to get a sheet of paper and, um, hey, and oh, I'll go get some. no newspaper and fold it over, so, so that helps pull a lot of the uh, moisture up. Okay. There you go, Layla. So, I just took some newspaper and folded it. Oh, it's going to have to be bigger than that. Well, Hold on. We're going to the paper. Okay. No, we already have some on that. Okay, so, what are you doing, Layla? So I took a piece of paper and um, I folded it and it's got like four layers. Yeah. And so when he's done squeezing the water out, we're gonna place it on here to dry. Yeah. And that's Mr. Yeah. Mac. <laughs> so, Hi. yeah. I'm hungry, look at this food. Yummy. Yeah, All right, he's still squeezing. We can so make a, a mean burger with that. I think good. it is good. Yeah. So let's place it here. And we'll set it up. Okay. So, where am I? Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess that's as far as you can get. Like if it was... I need a sponge. That's what we need. Good hustle, guys. It does feel strange. I know. I don't like oh, yeah. You see what I'm doing? Okay. You can just squeeze a little bit with the fingers and it gets a lot of that out. Yeah, this is really wet here. We're squeezing water out. 
I don't know if you guys can see edges. that. Once you get most of it out of the screen, then you can lay it over on here. You may want to get another one. Oh, she's crying. Okay. All right, Rachel, so you ready? Oh, yes, I'm ready. Oh. And take the top layer off. Mm -hmm. Cut it there. Oh, it's going to rip. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. And then I'm going to place this like this on our paper. Squeeze it down a little bit. And then peel this up. Just like a sticker. Yes. Yummy. Mm -hmm. So now it'll dry overnight. It's gonna fall apart. It's gonna be thick like that. It looks so beautiful. So yeah. Okay, Valerie's, Valerie's, I think, is real thin. This one? There's Valerie. Yeah. Look at her. It looks really good. Good job, Val, if you're watching this. All right. I hope you guys make paper at home. See you next time. Okay, good luck making pa paper. Yeah. Bye. Bye. So today we're going to talk about LD50. Now, if you turn to 474 in your book, we will discuss what that means. So in your notes, lethal dose 50 or LD50 as it's known. If you're wondering what all this white stuff is, it's paper. We just recycled paper in here. Or it's bad dandruff, one of the two. Okay, lethal dose 50 is the dose of a chemical that is lethal to 50% of a population of a particular species. So when, you, when companies test chemicals and they're seeing the effects on organisms, um, they wanna know like how much does it take to actually have a severely negative impact. So two types of tests could be done. If you're on 475, they talk about the, or actually 474, they talk about both these a little bit more in depth. Um, lethal dose 50, meaning, if you exposed, you know, mice to 10 grams of mercury and that like killed half of your mice that you, you were exposing them to, that would be your LD50, okay? If you were just looking at to see when a particular substance has a negative effect on a large amount of your group, you would do an ED50 test, which is called effective dose 50. Effective dose means it's affecting at least half of the population, okay? Now, mostly we're going to look at LD50 for apes. They don't do a lot of uh, ED50 stuff, I don't think. So we're, we're primarily focused on LD50, what that means. Why would a company, like let's say a pharmaceutical company or some company that produces any kind of like harmful chemical, why would they want to do an LD50 test? Yeah, so they want to see and make sure it doesn't hurt a significant portion of a population that that chemical may be affecting. Um, and they also, a lot of times, do these tests to see how it's going to affect, how a chemical will affect humans. So they're not going to do LD50 or ED50 tests on people. Why? Um, people. Yeah, because you can't test people where you're going to, like, kill them so, or hurt them. Now... The exception there would be pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceutical companies will test on different animals and then they eventually have to go, if it looks safe, they'll eventually have to go to human trials. So there has to be some human testing, um, but it, it's tested on usually two different types of animals first, okay? So let's go through on 475 and we're gonna read through this and there's some important stuff here. So um, who wants to read for me? Go, DeQuinte. On the right column where it says four humans. The human probe, the regulatory agencies are, are as much more conservative, conservative than setting concentration. As mentioned earlier, dose response tests cannot be conducted on humans. Therefore, scientists conduct dose response experiments on rats and mice and then extrapolate the results to humans. Okay, so let's talk about that first. What does extrapolate mean? No idea. What? Compare. Compare. I'm going to say extend the results to. Okay. So let's say you had a one pound rat and it took this much arsenic to be harmful to this one pound rat. And then you said, well, how much would it take to be harmful to a 150 pound human? Well, you would just like multiply it by 150 pounds. Does that make sense? So you're extending the results from one thing to another based on like the per, like the size of it. Now, why do they test rats and mice so often? Because they're smaller. 
Like They're small. Like nobody really cares about them. There's a lot of them. They reproduce very quickly. What else? I say the gestation period is short, so they can easily. Okay, they reproduce really quickly. Yeah, physio physiologically speaking, they are very similar. So, a lot of times what's going to happen is they'll do these tests on rats or mice, and then if it goes through there, then for human stuff that are like uh, pharmaceuticals, they'll go to rabbits. Well, it's another one. It's a little bit bigger. It's a different type of animal, but um, also it reproduces pretty quickly, and it's easy to look at. And then if it goes through on those two different animals, then they'll go to like human trials. Okay? So... Um, so you got to extrapolate the results to humans. Keep going, Quinte. The LD50 values. The LD50 or ED50 values are being divided by 10 to determine the safe concentration for rats and mice. These values are divided by 10 again to reflect that rats and mice may be less sensitive to a chemical than humans. Finally, this value is often divided by 10 again to ensure an extra level of caution. In short, the LD50 and ED50 values are changed when rats and mice are divided by 1,000 to set the safe value for humans. Okay, so... If you've got an LD50 value for, for rats or mice, they're going to divide that by 1,000 to basically say what is the safe dose for humans. So on 474 at the top of the page there, in this graph, what is the lethal dose? Five and a half. Okay, roughly about 5.5. What is the threshold? So this is a term that's not on your notes that you do need to know. 50. What, 50? What are you talking about? We're talking about dosage. What is the threshold dose? You're looking at mortality. What does threshold mean? It's the top. It's the left, the most sustainable. Like if. What'd you say, Jeremiah? I stopped talking. Like how much they can handle. Yeah. Threshold in this case, when we're talking about. These type of tests is talking about when you start seeing effects. So you're crossing a line, essentially. Like, you know, crossing the threshold, we talk about, that's an often used term. So when you're crossing the threshold here on LD50 tests, you're crossing a line into something happening. Either it's affecting the organisms, or in this case, it's starting to kill organisms, which would be about where? Three. Three, two and a half, three. Now, the reason I say that is because on an FRQ about, I don't know, five or six years ago, there was a LD50 test. You had to analyze the results, find the LD50. You also had to identify where the threshold was, and that's something we didn't talk about, so I want to make sure we talk about it. All right, so that's where you start seeing it. Here's another question. What is the safe number or what is the safe amount for uh, humans in this test? Let's say that number was like a percent, that dose was a percentage the theoretical units, and what would be the uh, safe, and, and that was the one in, in mice or rats, what would be the safe amount for humans? So you would take the 5.5 and you would divide it by 1,000, and I'm pretty sure I looked this up from last period and forgot to erase it. So if you had to calculate that safe dosage, there we go. So you had 5.5 divided by 1,000 and just move the decimal over three places. So it'd be 0 0.0055 would be the safe amount. Now, let's do another calculation. Let's say, we're going to do a different one than I've got up here. All right, let's say that we've got some data. Now, what's in rat poisons? Anybody know? Arsenic. Arsenic, yes. And so arsenic's in there because it's deadly to rats and mice and rodents. And also a bunch of other stuff, to be honest with you. If you ever watch forensics files on TV, they always have these forensic files where like women kill their husbands because they're feeding them like arsenic on the side. Have y'all seen those? Yes. Watch out, guys. It always seems like it's women killing their husbands in like a slow, traumatic way. But anyway, it's an interesting thing. Well, forensic really files. For, for money. Not only do they kill their husbands, they kill their kids too. Hey, I saw one where, you know, they actually found out that um, the wife was was trying to kill her husband because the daughter got sick. And she, the mom was putting the arsenic, like in small amounts, in the dad's like thermos. But I guess the girl maybe would drink something. It was like his coffee thermos for work. But I don't know, something happened and maybe the girl used it one day. And so she had a little bit in her system when they tested her. And so that's how they knew that he wasn't just getting that like somewhere outside. Because she was like, yeah, he's probably getting it from work or wherever, somewhere outside of the home. But that's how she. That's how the investigators knew 
that he was exposed to it in the home because the daughter had also been exposed to it, but not the wife. I'm surprised <laughs> We're recording now, so let's not say anything else. So, okay, let's say, now these numbers I'm, are all hypothetical. I'm making these up. But let's say for arsenic, our LD50 is going to be um, like five grams per pound. Okay? So for every one pound of mice or rat, the LD50 to kill half of them, okay? So let's say you have 10, 10 rats and they all weigh a pound each. You give them all five grams of arsenic and how many is it going to kill? Half of them. So it's going to kill half of them, okay? So what would the safe dose be for a 100-pound human, okay? So, shh, no. So quietly calculate the safe dose for humans if that's the LD50 dose for mice. Okay, remember in humans, think about what the safe dose is, okay? But first thing you have to do is extrapolate this number to our 100 pound humans. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you gotta extrapolate the LD50 to the 100 pound humans and then you've gotta find the safe dose, okay?